Hi, this is Matt Moniz from Spooky South Coast. We're here at the second annual Ocean State Paracon. I'm here with Nicole LaRouze. Now, Nicole, you're here selling crystal skulls. Now, you're also doing aura photography. Can you give us a little bit of a description about what aura photography is? Sure. Aura photography is um, what everybody has an aura around them. It's a bioelectromagnetic field. And what I do is I have a special camera that I capture that on the film, like we see here. This is yours, Matt. Yep. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, but we see that we have an aura that comes out on the film, and then I do a reading on that. Now, there are three main pic uh Three main sections to the aura photo. Uh, this section right here pertains to the energy that you put out into the world, how people perceive you, uh, interactions with others, that kind of thing. This section right here shows the energy of what's going on with you right now on a more personal level. And then this section right here shows the energy that you're bringing in. Now can you tell us a little bit how the about how the equipment works? Sure. It is a biofeedback system, so it's not a quick snap of a camera shutter just like every other camera. Uh, so it does feed through the meridians in your hands. Uh, that feeds the information from all the parts of your body and your chakra system into the hand plates which then goes and feeds into the camera. The camera interprets that and it's a specially designed camera that a lot of research has been um, done on. And then my camera is the AuraCam 6000 designed by um, Guy Coggins and it's extremely accurate and what happens is that information gets fed to that and gets processed and put on the photo. Nicole, I work in a pharmaceutical industry and I believe you do as well. Can you tell me a little bit about pharmaceuticals and how this affects them? Well, the pharmaceuticals, when you take, when you ingest pharmaceuticals, they interact with your body on different levels. So depending on what that pharmaceutical is, it can have an effect on the aura. For instance, if you take any kind of mind-altering or um, kind of sedatives for depressant, you know, antidepressants, that can affect the brain activity, which then affects your electromagnetic field around you. So that can actually come out in the aura either as stress or de-stressing, depending on how it's working on your body. Um, alcohol, for instance, usually street has... Drugs. Street drugs, yes. Those kinds of things usually have an effect on the aura of bringing certain whites in or different colors in, depending on what's actually going on. Um, if you're on those things at the time that you get your aura, aura photo done, sometimes uh, I can tell just by looking at the photo because when I do the interpretation I actually go into the aura and read the aura with the photo so I show you on the picture what's going on what I see those kinds of things will alter they'll bring different kinds of forms in they may also bring in a negative kind of light as well stresses and things like that day after a lot of binge drinking will bring in a lot of the stress reds into the photo Okay, now, my question to follow up on this is you're saying that street drugs and other pharmaceuticals and alcohol will change how, how the aura affects. Now, suppose somebody that is undiagnosed with a mental disorder, how would that affect the photo? Will people that have a mental disorder show up differently in an aura photo? Sometimes, yes, and the aura photo is not actually anything that will diagnose anything. However, sometimes we can see areas of focus, is what I like to call them. So we can kind of see different things that go on, and I can point out uh, things that may not be matching up with the general aura of the person. So that's kind of how we can pick those types of things. Would you be so kind as to talk about the crystal skulls and how those came into your life? Sure. It's kind of a long story. However, the crystal skulls are extremely interesting and uh, when you bring in crystal and carve it into the shape of a skull, you actually bring in a higher consciousness level. So people are able to interact with those kinds of um, crystals a little bit more uh, intuitively than just picking up a rock per se. So 
it's very complicated to get really into it and take a little bit longer than I think that we have right now, but um, they're very interesting and if you're interested in crystal skulls, I suggest you try to hold one and see how it interacts with you. All right, now I've encountered a couple of different uh, crystal skulls throughout the ages. Uh, I've seen the Mitchell Hedges and several others. I've actually had a chance to uh, touch Serenity and take a photograph with it. Now most of these all have a name. Do you have a particular name for yours? This one right here, her name is Soma. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what does Soma mean? Is that a name you gave it or it came with it? It's the name that she told me is her name. So her full name is Soma Naatea. And basically that means she who brings wisdom. So when she interacts with people, she really brings a lot of wisdom and healing and knowledge that uh, you may not already know, that it's more innately or ancient kind of knowledge that she brings out within you. All right. Thank you, Nicole. If people want to get a hold of you, how uh, would they be able to do so? Do you have a website? I do have a website, and it's being revamped right now. However, you can still see um, the old website right now, which is www.magicllc.com, and magic is spelled M-A-J-I-K. I'm also on Facebook as facebook.com slash magicllc.